I say Renoir, you say France. I say Constable, you say England. At least I hope you do. I say Van Gogh, you say Holland. Who knows what the alchemy is that creates these reputations? But some painters seem to become the embodiment of their countries. Well, let me add to that list. I say Grigorescu, you say Romania. Welcome to Who is Romania and the man who literally changed the face of Romanian art, Nicolae Grigorescu, probably the most important Romanian painter of all time, a leader in the Impressionist movement, and to look at something of a 19th century Orlando bloom. What made him so phenomenal? Well, in a nutshell, Grigorescu had the ability to mix on his palette the very best of the international artists he rubbed shoulders with from Millet to Renoir, and at the same time immortalise the spiritual essence, the beauty of the Romanian countryside. 1848, the year that revolution rocks Europe. Grigorescu, aged 10, had moved to tormented Bucharest. His father's early death meant that Grigorescu's passion for art had to make money from the get-go. So where did he start? Well, even today, in most Romanian homes, when you enter a house, don't look at the paintings on the wall, but look at the corners of the rooms. There's sure to be an icon or two looking down, watching your every move. Duam the Fereshti. So that's where our young Grigorescu starts. He knows he's got to get a gig in that world, so he hangs about outside and finally gets a gig inside, one of the very best makers of miniatures and icons in Bucharest, the workshop of Anton Kladek. His dream, of course, is to ultimately study abroad, and for that, he has to scale up. So you see him move from painting small icons to much bigger spiritual canvases, churches and monasteries. And probably his most famous, impressive work in this field is Agapia Monastery in Moldova. There you can really see how he captures the Renaissance style, the lines, the colours, the shapes. There's something of Titian, of da Vinci. He says, icons. They must be made with warmth, to vibrate with one's soul. Otherwise, they are nothing but photographs. And I challenge you, even if you're a non-believer, a layperson, to look at his work, his paintings in monasteries, and not be moved by it. As for Grigorescu, you don't become Romania's most famous painter without a bit of political piggybacking. So you see him depart from his iconography in 1856 and serve up the most exquisite historical composition, Mihai Skapan Stindardal, Mihai dropping the flag. The Mihai in question is Mihai Michael the Brave and this subject, this man, as the focal point of the painting is absolutely deliberate because at this time it's all about nation building, especially in the Romanian principalities which are keen to unite and and push back against their bigger imperial neighbours. So it's no coincidence that he's in the picture presented by Grigorescu to politician Barbu Sterbi, who in fact was in his own time two times leader of Wallachia. But Barbu Sterbi, this Romanian politician, does not give Grigorescu the money that he needs. But he didn't have to wait long. It's after Agapaya Monastery he hits jackpot when politician Mihail Coglicianu, who was soon to become the Prime Minister of the recently united Romanian principalities, spots his talent and backs him. So where does he go? France. Where else? He drops his saints and angels and wins a place to study at Beaux-Arts de Paris. It's there that he soon joins the famous Barbizon group. This is a school of artists who are inspired by the Romantic movement. Grigorescu soon becomes the man of the moment. The good and the great of European high society start to buy his art, and among them is the Emperor of France. In this context, Napoleon III is pretty significant because he was an early backer of Romanian unification and independence from the Ottomans. So this relationship between Grigorescu and Napoleon is interesting. We know Grigorescu has a nose for reading the political climate. So suddenly he leaves behind his bohemian pastoral France and dons the cloak of a patriot. How does he do this? He returns to Romania 
and becomes a frontline painter in what Romanians term their War of Independence. Back then, frontline painters were the equivalent of photographers, but of course Grigorescu was never simply going to copy what he saw, he interpreted it. And it's the Attacle de la Smardan, the Attack of Smardan, which is really a historical masterpiece like no other. The composition is simple. In the foreground, you have two fallen men, one a prostrate Turkish soldier, the other a Romanian. And then beyond and around them is the infantry, bayonets in hand, crouching, moving relentlessly forward, that expression, their hunched backs. And it's the multiplication of that image that gives this idea of a heroic symphony, men moving onwards towards danger, death, greatness. Icons, churches, landscapes, war. It's perhaps no surprise that when Grigorescu eventually retires, he moves to the Romanian countryside. And that's when his paintings become more blurry, the colours less intense, but no less beautiful. You see, he was beginning to lose his eyesight. There is a deeply personal note in these works, something sublime beyond pain. This white period, as the specialists call it, is when we see him really reach the peak of artistic maturity. And that is when he captures the real poetry of deep Romania. The oxen cult was a theme he often returned to, capturing the rural idyll through these majestic, cumbersome beasts with their bovine bulk. It is ironic, perhaps, given the peaceful theme of his final works, that he died in 1907, the year of the most violent, unprecedented peasants' revolt in Romania. He left behind a world more in need of his remarkable imprint than ever before. As for Grigorescu, his last journey on earth was in an oxen cart moving slowly down a country lane. In life, as in art, this man was the real deal. And still today in our busy world, he speaks to us. He's one of Romania's best-selling artists. His paintings command hundreds of thousands of pounds. And his contribution to Romania, to art, to European culture, well, that's priceless. <laughs>